Hi Ian, Dave Stokes here. Look, thanks so much for your interest Ian. I, uh, it's a rare treat to be conversing with someone of your calibre and insight. Please be forewarned, I use some explicit language in this message, but only for emphasis and not for what the Americans call cussing. I'd like to focus on one possible solution, the one I consider the elephant in the room, and I'll make brief mention of all the others at the end. I feel it would be a big leap forward to develop an online automated audio editing process. To give some context, the three broad phases and their time allocations for audiobook creation uh, recording 20%, production 70%, and publication 10%. So recording and publication are largely learning and hurdle tasks, that is environment, narration, equipment advice, and predetermined publication format and the audio quality standards. Although there are definitely opportunities to support some of these tasks, any Tom, Dick or Harry could spend money to achieve similar gains. So in my opinion, it's not a competitive advantage. I believe the production step can be fully automated with a combination of currently available technologies, leading to a massive reduction in production time and consequently lower costs, higher margins or reduced prices. In essence, I feel the IP is in developing an uninterrupted process to perform the audio equivalent of a text-based find and replace on a recording. The trick is in the keyword stop as we discussed over lunch. However, a keyword like fuck might be more natural for a frustrated author repeating the same sentence up to nine times before getting it perfect. And that has happened and will more likely be unique to errors only in the recording. Stop appears in lots of sentences, but I digress. The keyword would be a variable in any program design, and as such, we could search for any word or phrase, which leads me to scaling of the IP. Much has been made of voice search. Google are leading the charge with Google Home, Amazon's Echo and Apple Siri came to market in earlier times. They are all bundled under the banner of voice recognition or VR software and all depends on the ability to translate the spoken word into text. Curiously, the best of breed VR software is available for free automatically when one uploads a video to YouTube and you can edit and download it. The transcript is better than 90% accurate in my opinion, the major exceptions being names and punctuation. Find any old video on YouTube, Ian, then click the three dots below the bottom right of the video frame, then click Open Transcript. If you press Control F on your keyboard, you can find all instances of your search term. In addition, you can copy and paste the entire manuscript to Word, Notepad, whatever. These features are all complementary as supplied by YouTube. Another transcription system called Otter is gaining ground, but it's quite recent to the market. Look, I hope I haven't frustrated you with the level of detail here, but I'll come straight to the point with an example. A friend asks you whether the book you are currently reading mentions the town of Bermagui. You reply that you seem to remember reading that in a previous chapter, but aren't sure. Either you or your friend will want to do a search within the book for this phrase. So what are your options? If you're reading an ebook, it's too easy. Just click search, type in the phrase, and it will point you to locations in the book where the phrase has been found. These are shown as clickable links in a list that will take you right to that spot in the book. If you're reading a paperback, not so easy. You could try the index, glossary, table of contents, but it's potentially a lengthy task. If you're listening to an audio book, well, you're buggered. Start from the beginning and listen to the whole recording? I don't think so. But there is a solution currently available at Amazon called WhisperSync and Immersion Reading. If the ebook and audio versions are better than 96% synchronized, then a customer can listen and read along. So that's part of the problem solved, but for researchers and just plain curious folks who may wish to search 
just one of or their entire library of audiobooks for a list of spoken phrases containing their keywords and the hour, minute and second timestamp location in the recording. How do they do that? I can do it manually at the moment, but want it on my web page for use by my business and my adoring listening and writing public. The bonus uses include the provision of transcripts and transcript or subtitle editing services. Currently the market rate is between $1 and $3 per minute. So I feel that one set of technologies solves a number of different business and customer problems and addresses the need of the rapidly growing voice revolution. That's what I would like to have a budget for, but I'm happy to go ahead with less ambitious plans, knowing that the demand for audio continues to increase over time. It's just a question of when. Here's a few additional dot points that uh, we may also like to discuss. So first one here I've got is um, crumbs from the tables and courting of the large publishers, which basically refers to the fact that uh, many audiobook authors are turned away, either because they don't have the budget to be able to afford their services, or in the case where the larger publishing companies just aren't able to sell the audio rights. Point number two is the author relief from the audio rights buyback. So in most cases, the larger publishers will revert those audiobook rights back to the author if they haven't been able to sell the rights themselves for free, uh, but not always the case, something to bear in mind. Communicating an affordable audiobook offer. So I think this is largely about a, a broader marketing question, and that's something that uh, I think I've, I'm developing some experience in, but I certainly could benefit from some additional uh, financial help and consultancy help on those things. At the moment, I've joined up to become a mentor at Swinburne University. The students have to complete a semester-long project, and I'll be mentoring them once a week for an hour or so. And the other side of that is that I get to supply them with a project as well. So I probably won't be mentoring my own project, but I stand to get some software built to a certain standard through the use of um, student partnerships, which is, I think, a, a nice way of saying um, you know, slave or equity labor from the poor old students. So that could be a way of building the SaaS platform. The other issue is scaling with people or technology. And I've probably addressed that briefly in the earlier part of my little dissertation. So I'd certainly consider a technology a lot more scalable than people, but there is always the option of just employing more people and potentially at an overseas, uh, at an overseas rate. And then finally, I guess it's, um, I've had a lot of success with the um, KPI authors that I mentioned, the key people of influence authors who actually are mandated to write a book during the 12-month course that they attend. And so that's a nice funnel of, of authors coming onto the market the whole time. So I think perhaps if I look at groups um, that do similar sorts of executive training programs to KPI, then that may be a good option for increasing the size of the market. Anyhow, I've probably talked too long, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, just a novel way of returning rather than email. Thank you so much for your attention and I'm sure I'll enjoy your feedback and the warmest regards from Dave.